All right, welcome back. It's time for us to have a conversation on our personality profile segment this morning. And I'm excited to introduce to you a man who really needs no introduction. Um, after um, so many years of being in the public space, dealing with all of us Ghanaians, um, you, you understand what I mean in just a second. Um, he's the executive secretary um, of the National Identification Authority. The prof the one and only Kenneth Ajiman Atifa. You're welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you very much, David. Yes, it's good, good to have you here. Thank you. All right, so um, everybody, you know, knows you as the NIA boss and uh, the Ghana card man. Um, but let's go back in time. Um, where did life begin for you? <laughs> Thank you very much, and good morning to your viewers and listeners. Um, life began for me on November 9th, 1959. Okay. Um, my parents were poor peasant farmers from Grasso in the Asantiachi municipality. My mother is from the uh, Grasso Oyoko royal family. Okay. Um, and my father uh, is from Achinda and was the Ujikro of the Odan Crofon, so the original Odan settlement near. Um, Achim Afusu, Prasukuma, Fuasia, okay. um, Iribi yeah, area, yeah. and thereabouts. Um, and I grew up at Drasso. I'm a, typically a village boy. Um, I attended Drasso Local Authority Primary School, uh, walked barefooted, walked to the farm virtually every day, wow. but grew up as a, as a last born of a, mm. uh, my parents' four sets of twins. Uh, and, and I'm the my twin brother and I are the, la are the boys, and um, I have four three sets, sets of, of twins. Yes, yes. Um, and that meant um, being the least in the house of Israel, um, yeah. learning to know your place yeah. and um, to be patient and mm. um, wait your turn, wait your turn mm. and be respectful and mm. all the other things. But it also um, meant um, being a boy, um, being. And, and my twin brother wasn't very strong. Indeed, he, he passed away of leukemia oh, in 1996 when we were 36. Mm. So, um, yeah, but I was stronger. I was stout and strong, and my mother made sure that she piled the work on me. I oh. carried um, lots of um, footstuffs, heavy loads of it, baskets and, you know, uh, tied firewoods and mm. everything from the farm. Mm. Um, to the railway station at Drasso for sale or to the market. And this Whoa. is something that we did as a matter of routine, fetching water from the riverside, not pipe bone. Well, mm. pipe bone water came Later. along the way, yeah. Yeah. but um, such was uh, life. Mm. We went to elementary school mm. um, at Drasso, did common entrance um, in 1972, okay. and went to Yachik Pramso Secondary School, which was then just two years old. My teacher uh, passed. My teacher passed. Mm -hmm. It had just been established in 1970, and wow. um, I went there in 1972. Okay. That is a school that the Honorable Minister for, current Minister for Education, um, Honorable Dr. Ose Aduchu, yeah. attended. I left in, uh, I entered in 72 and, uh, and left in 77, mm. and I believe he must have entered a year I I left. Um, I had a good fortune <coughs> of um, being able to go to uh, St. Peter's mm. uh, Secondary School for, wow. my, for my sixth form. Okay. But I think the most interesting aspects of my life rather begin from that background at Drasso, learning, being the, being, as it were, uh, the male, mm. the strong male mm. in a very matriarchal, um, at minimum, at trilineal, but my mom was very strong. Okay. My mom, I think, um, my mom was a matriarch of the mm. family, very mm. strong woman, tall, regal, beautiful, dark, and uh, no-nonsense woman, mm. Um, mm. who raised us in the strict traditions of the Presbyterian Church, okay. and, and inculcated in us the uh, values and, and, and ethical standards that have uh, held me in good stead uh, mm. to this day, of course, giving me some problems uh, <laughs> because uh, standing up for the right thing, doing the yeah. right thing, yeah. uh, upholding standards of integrity and decency, mm. um, it's not easy in, in, in our parts mm. of the world. And um, so that's uh, 
uh, part of the background. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, going to secondary school was a game changer for me. Mm. I wouldn't have had that opportunity but for my uncle, my, mm. my mother's big brother, mm -hmm. who um, spent the night in the village with us because his vehicle had broken down um, somewhere near Grasso, mm. a village called Atridia, while he was traveling to Kumasi. Stopped over and then in the next morning uh, he was given the centerfold of my uh, school exercise book uh, okay. to use as toilet paper. Oh. You know, you sprinkle water on it and make it very soft. <laughs> we appropriate technology. <laughs> appropriate technology. We couldn't afford um, uh, daily graphic. Yeah. No, to to oh. T roll was just um, out of the Lazy. question. Uh, out of the question. I, wow. I, I don't know that there were many people in my village growing in Grasso, mm -hmm. growing up who relied on, uh, mm. who used toilet paper in the sense that we know it. But, oh. but yeah, newspaper was the the main mm. yeah the mm. main thing and but and we couldn't find have it so it was a centerfold okay. of my exactly. schoolwork cool. yeah. and my uncle while on the loo looked at it saved a portion came back and inquired whose handwriting is this whose work is this and said this boy must go to secondary school wow. so on his way back hey. from Kumasi then he brought common entrance um, past questions and yeah preparatory materials and my twin brother and I um, wrote and I had a good fortune of passing and by the time my parents were able to raise the 25 cities mm -hmm. in those days to go pay the deposit at a proper college we had lost the place um, it took us quite a lot of trips from the farm to the mm -hmm. station back mm -hmm. and forth selling plantain uh, suckers of plantain and um, other things to raise the funds. Hmm. And um, so I ended up at Jachi Pramso. Okay. Um, at Mighty Japas, as we, <laughs> yeah. we called it. I just it. like yeah. the name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was inspiring. Um, in 1972, this was complete bush. I mean, mm -hmm. we were basically providing child labor, creating the school pitch, um, weeding around. Um, there just wasn't much mm -hmm. in terms of facilities. And mm -hmm. we trekked between Jachi, the, between the far end of Pramso and the middle, um, the early portion of Jachi. Yeah. Uh, it was quite a distance mm -hmm. and on, on dusty roads every day yeah. to school for the first two um, um, lectures and then back to Pramso for breakfast mm -hmm. and then back to the new oh, site wow. to, for lectures yeah. and all that sort of thing. But they stepped to strengthen us and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, made me cultivate the habit right. of waking up at 4 a.m. every day. Super. So, so this um, young boy who, uh, by the divine intervention of an uncle's tummy upset, you know, <laughs> would probably be still going to the farm, will later move into criminology. What inspired that? Um, I, well, first of all, I studied sociology and political science at Legon. Okay. And one of the courses in sociology was social deviance and control. Yeah. Um, criminology is the study of the phenomenon of crime mm -hmm. and societal responses to crime. Mm -hmm. And because crime is so disruptive um, and generally um, deviance has to do with you know, disreputable pleasures and, and, and um, things that cause pain and all of that. And I've seen quite a bit of pain. I've seen quite a bit of injustice. I've seen a bit of um, bullying in the schoolyard. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't like school when I was young. Really? No, I wasn't good at school. I, in a class of 35, I was always 32, 33. Uh, my twin brother was fourth, fifth, third, but I was always but how so? Oh, uh, until class four, uh -huh. when um, teacher Mankwa said, that hurts. You know, that I, I've never encountered a situation with twins where yeah. one is so daft and one is so really sharp. And yeah. so um, apply yourself and you can make it. And yeah. he, he picked on my interest. My only interest in school mm -hmm. was um, the Bible storybooks, the okay. stories of contrast, yeah. Cain and Abel, David and mm, Goliath, Goliath mm. and you know, Esau, those kinds of 
um, stories. And, and um, I like them because they also contained pictures. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you could trace the outline mm -hmm. uh, okay. with a bit of kerosene. Yeah. It becomes transparent. If you spread kerosene on it, yeah. then you can trace can the trace outline yeah. and then, wow. you know, wow. with color I'm chalk. I'm learning something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then you stick it on a wall and yeah. it's for like um, your photo, photo studio or mm -hmm. some artwork. But that's what I liked about school. Okay. Because it was a place of tyranny and abuse. Big mm. boys, big people yeah. terrorized little ones like yeah. me. And my twin brother was lanky, lanky, you know, slim, but mm. good at soccer. And um, he would dribble them and they would chase him to beat him, I mean, to knock him yeah. down. And that would generate a fight. And I was stout. And I learned to fight early on. Okay. I learned to be a defender. I learned to be a protector. And I, I took these things growing up into um, human rights, into mm -hmm. law. And so, yes, I studied law. I mean, I studied criminology, mm -hmm. um, built a career mm -hmm. out of that, yeah. advised the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in mm -hmm. Canada, did a few interesting things and became a teacher in it, but also uh, maintained a long-standing interest in, in, in becoming a lawyer. Yeah. One day, um, I picked up a coin. Um, uh, at city mm -hmm. and um, I had gone to visit my my cousin's wife who liked me very much she mm -hmm. sell, she used to sell buff fruit okay um, these donuts and she made a big parcel of it for me mm -hmm. when I was going home I picked up a coin the, the negotiations were here Nigerians mm -hmm. and I picked up a coin and I put it in my pocket on the floor just luck yeah. And I had this book wrote and money in my pocket. I was king. Yeah. I was a champion guy. <laughs> my friends were playing soccer. I wrapped my book foot with my shirt mm -hmm. in a corner and I was playing soccer. And then my mom showed up and she had snot all over her face. She was crying. She was, her eyes were red and she was with my cousins, my aunt, yeah. my cousin's yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. Apparently, and the lady had sent me to bring the safe in which she sold the buff fruit, you know, yeah, the cage. Yes. Um, and she had gone to complain to my mom that she had lost her CD. And so my mom and this lady came, my mom very upset, mm -hmm. hoisted me and gave me the beating of my life. And then searched my pocket and found a coin. Mm. Oh. Now, I didn't even know what was happening yeah, until much yeah. later. But it was one of the saddest days in my life um, about um, injustice, about unfair yeah. treatment, about humiliation mm. in public, about mm. all the things that were wrong. Mm. Years later, Rose, one of my classmates, Rose in Chua, who lived in that same house with mm. a lady, told me and her husband, yeah. when, when she married, mm. that the woman found her money later the, the same day she had Imagine. actually put it not in the safe mm. but under her pillow she found it but she told the household not, not to, to mention it. it and you had to suffer and for it. i endured this for yeah. and i and, and i got to know this truth only in 2015 oh. when wow. i visited you know um, um uh, woodbridge virginia and rose's husband who was my cousin told me the story, my uncle's son. And um, he, yeah, that, that, that was. Uh, no, that no, is of so course, for you to be even talking goodness. about it yeah. now, I can imagine it's how it bruised your ego yes, as a yes, young yes, man. Yes, 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 And it was public. Yeah. So that was one of the biggest influences mm -hmm. in my life. I mean, early events that shaped me mm -hmm. to get into human rights, to mm -hmm. get into mm -hmm. um, um, criminology yeah. and, and law. Mm -hmm. And I think I've used my uh, legal advocacy to mm. to defend people. Mm -hmm. um, more recently, before just before I stopped practice, Martin yeah. Pegu and I were I, I was a lead counsel in defending about ten people who were accused of the murder of a, a DC from Quanta South. Mm. Um, you know, and, and I believe that they had not. And I handled that. Um, mm. I've been a human rights person, and yeah. I became a commissioner for human rights mm. in, in in British Columbia. Mm. Where, where yeah. are these? <laughs> what are these, we at? these are pictures of me. Um, th th this one is when I was teaching at um, Malaspina University College. It's uh, down Rhode Island 
okay. University. I, mm -hmm. This is January 1988. Okay. I was the first male in Canada to teach a women's studies course. Wow. Um, that is how I used to dress to school. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought you were shut up. Spot on, spot on. And that's, that's <laughs> me holding um, a book on women. Women and Politics in Canada. Uh, yeah. This is 1998. Uh, I was teaching uh, women's studies. It mm. caused a great furore mm -hmm. in Canada about yeah. the participation of males in, in, um, in the feminist movement. Mm. That feminism is about um, a point of view that doesn't treat men as yeah. a norm and women as departure from mm. the norm. Mm. It's a perspective that empowers and, and, and makes it possible for all of us to, um, you know, have an equal shake of the of, of the pie, yeah. yeah. So that's the day I arrived in Canada in 1984. Okay. Uh, September, no, August 1984. Mm. <laughs> right. Do you yes. remember the emotions of the day as you 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 touched ground in Canada? Um, that one was uneventful because I had been to the UK, um, okay. and I had. Um, yeah, the culture shock part mm. had been taken care of, Over even it. by my visit to Ivory Coast. I think oh. my first place outside Ghana was La Côte d'Ivoire, okay. um, and it was rather shocking. What uh, was the shock for you? Oh, the shock was the cultural difference, mm. attitudes toward um, sex and gender. Okay. I think um, it was, my, prostitution abounded. Mm. Um, I, my, 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 my bachelor's thesis, or yeah, thesis dissertation yeah. was on prostitution among Ghanaian women abroad, a case study of um, Abidjan and Lagos. Okay. Um, and, and it was shocking, the values that we, we hold sacred, the yeah. things that we hold dear. But Ghana's economy mm. had gone to the dogs, mm. and the pro Ghanaian women had trooped to uh, Agege. Agege mm. was a term referring to everywhere outside Ghana, yeah. okay. even though it's a suburb in, um, in a Lagos. Yeah, yeah, yes, Lagos. but um, we went to Abidjan, I mean, we, we went to, I mean, Ghanaian, yeah. uh, Ghanaians, mm. we went to Germany, we went to the Netherlands, we went to everywhere in the mm. world, America, Canada, Brazil, everywhere, to the extent we could to prostitute ourselves mm. um, or to sell our labor at the cheapest mm -hmm. um, because we had destroyed our country mm. and in the process debased our values mm. and we were debased and abused um, and by saying that I'm not blaming Ghanaian women I'm just saying that uh, our country was so bad yeah. that um, prostitution had become very uh, attractive. attractive and very normal means mm. for um, adaptation mm. for a lot of people and I studied that phenomenon getting to um, Ivory Coast was, was, a, was a shocker. Mm. Um, so, yes, but in terms of Canada, because I had also transited through uh, the United okay. Kingdom, the, the glitz, the glare, uh, the attraction mm. wasn't so shocking uh, or, or different. Yeah. But of course, living in Canada, I went to uh, Manitoba. Okay. Um, Winnipeg was easily um, one of the coldest cities in the mm. world. Mm. Um, mm. And, and so, yeah, I, I learned to live in a very cold city. Yeah. And that, that, that's me, um, when, I think my first winter. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I, li I learned to do and you a didn't bit want of to skiing. run away because N of the cold? Oh, no. I used to wonder why human beings live there okay. on a typical <laughs> December day. Yeah. Um, your skin yeah. freezes within 30 seconds of exposure. Mm. I mean, your oh, nose, yeah. your... Yeah. Um, your nose and mm. ears, yeah. um, you get frostbitten Frostbite, easily, yeah. your toes, um, and you wonder, the first is my uh, first birthday in, 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 um, in Canada. Canada, that was November 9th of 59. These are some friends from Zambia, um, me learning to drink beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which year was this? This was 84. Oh, oh, wow. oh I'm, I'm just kidding. I had, Don't mind me. I had had alcohol <laughs> in Ghana before. I mean, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, enjoying um, a social mm. uh, yeah. evening with, mm. some, with some friends, mm. yes. No, yes. but Prof, you would also later write a book, Fighting Armed Robbery in Ghana. Why, why that book? Um, because the phenomenon of armed robbery had become a major concern in this country. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that the views that a lot of people expressed on it were very pedestrian. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of journalistic opinions by some 
people who call themselves professionals, some of them police officers, um, not, not with a trained mind, mm -hmm. not a trained attention yeah. to what it is that, first of all, even the phenomenon of what it means, um, people get um, buggled and they say it's robbery. Mm -hmm. sure. um, people get attacked, nothing is stolen from them, yeah. but they say robbery. But I wanted to come out with a book mm -hmm. that critically analyzes the phenomenon mm. and provides solutions. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think that is what I did. I think mm. the book became um, a must read for Ghana Police Service yeah. and um, a number of universities outside the country adopted mm. it as a, as a core textbook in introduction mm. to criminology. Now, you know... <laughs> what, and, and, what, and finally, I think yes. it helped a lot of households. There were people who met me mm -hmm. and would, who, who would meet me and say, based on the recommendations in your book, this is how I have adjusted security mm. arrangements wow, wow. in my house Super. and that sort of thing. Right. Now, when I saw your CV, I felt like, whoa, <laughs> now that's a whole, I mean, course, you know, for, <laughs> for students to learn because it's so much. But mm. let's now look at can I tell you, the NIA boss, you know, now in recent times when I hear NIA, I quite honestly, I always feel like, tell I feel for prof man, yeah, I feel for prof I man. Know, because I you know, know. <laughs> we always cry about change, but Ghanaians don't really like change, you know, when we have to do something. Mm. And I must really commend you that it really took a man of your stature, somebody who is really bent on and making sure that the right things are done. Yeah. And it explains it, you know, telling us where you have come from. And even as a child, as a young man, you making sure that you stood for what was right and making sure that there was justice in the system and all that. So you bring some kind of commitment, you know, and a certain resolve from where you are coming from. But how has the NIA journey been for you? <laughs> It's been difficult. It's been a roller coaster, yeah. um, but it's been worth it. Mm. The I had a good fortune of serving as executive secretary of the National Reconciliation Commission yes. during present Kufour's time. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. to Kufour. That's right. Yeah. And um, mm. at that time, I was subjected to quite a barrage of insults. There were suspicions about the motives of the of the Reconciliation Commission and all of that. But that was just a dress rehearsal for what mm -hmm. was to come I guess. later. Yeah. Um, then when President Kufour subsequently appointed me as Executive Secretary of the National Identification Authority, yeah. after serving for a year, I was removed by President Milton's um, government. And uh, that also taught me some lessons. But the one year was a year during which um, I had succeeded Professor Adumo, my predecessor, yeah. and done the Eastern, he had set up the scheme, yeah. he had built the legal framework, all of that was done. But I um, rolled out the uh, mass registration exercise mm -hmm. with him as my advisor mm -hmm. in the central region, and then I took over for the rest of it, Western region, Eastern region, uh, Volta region, the most difficult uh, geographically in terms of terrain and yeah. Um, um, the, yeah, topography handled those ones then I was let go yeah. and the system between 2009 uh, when July 2009 when I was let go and February 2017 when I was brought back by His Excellency President Akufuado not much had happened we had registered um, about four million people yeah. and issued only 900,000 cards to people in Greater Accra mm -hmm. region the rest of the country nothing else the registration had happened, but the and data had is, not been... We didn't even know what we're supposed to be doing at that time. Mm. Mm. So a lot of the data was still on CD-ROMs in yeah. containers. Mm. Fast forward to 2017, the vice president set up a technical committee to advise government mm. on how best to activate a national identification system. The technical committee studied the nation's capacity and the yeah. capacities of various technical vendors, prospective mm. solutions providers, and made a recommendation that an existing arrangement between NIA and Identity Management Systems Limited, okay. a majority Ghanaian-owned company, mm -hmm. be activated and expanded mm -hmm. to 
um, provide the framework for the National Identification Authority. So government directed NIA yeah. to enter into a public-private partnership mm. agreement mm -hmm. with IMS. Okay. That's what we did. Some people have accused me of giving a contract. Mm -hmm. I never mm -hmm. gave a contract. I didn't have the capacity. I never did that. I was directed by letter from the chief of staff. Mm. Okay on behalf of His Excellency the President to enter into a contract based on the recommendations of a technical committee mm. which government accepted. Since then, it means that I have had problems with those who had vested interest or who were interested mm. in all kinds of mm. contracts that they mm. thought I had been a stumbling block yeah. to their yeah. um, getting. And um, one of the amazing things about the project we are doing it, this, this PPP is that it's over a 15 year period okay. Okay. and it is to over the 15 year life cycle it's going to save us about 1.5 million savings 1.5 billion okay from just avoiding duplication for mm, example wow. uh, NHIA is no longer producing cards yeah. mm. that's about 30 million dollar saving mm -hmm. every single year mm. for 15 years you mm. take SNET you take GRA you take mm. all these other mm. institutions mm. cost savings alone mm. Then there is revenue. Mm. Revenue that's projected to come in 1.2 billion. Yeah. And I had said so, and it was misunderstood that, it's, uh, it, it, that I had said that it was going to cost us 1.2 billion. billion. And then some people have insulted me. So when you, and, and, and continue to insult me and take pol make political capital mm -hmm. out of it and all of that. We are saving about 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. We are bringing in revenue of about 1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. The revenue is coming from verification services. Okay. We have built a robust, modern, dependable verification system that enables us so far, we have done over 120 million verifications mm -hmm. since January mm -hmm. without a single hitch. Mm -hmm. That's what we have done for this country. Mm -hmm. We have an identification system that is top of the world, mm -hmm. meets the highest mm -hmm. standards. We have a Ghana card, the card yeah. itself, mm -hmm. which meets the highest standards. Yeah. So all three key elements of our national identification system are at par with the best in the world. Mm -hmm. But in our sub-region, we've done, and, and everything we come up with, um, even when it is possible, yeah. they say it is not possible. Mm -hmm. When you say the Ghana card has um, a machine-readable travel yeah. facility mm -hmm. in it and that yeah. it can be used as a travel document yeah. they say it's not possible it's but, possible but, but maybe happening. you should educate us now that you are here mm. how does that come to play it is playing okay. and when you see when you hold the Ghana card mm -hmm. it is indubitable there is no argument okay. at least from our perspective that you are who we and you say you are yeah, yeah. until the contrary is proved mm -hmm. now if you are coming from a, any Euro American country, anywhere yeah. where there is not just Euro American, anywhere where there is an electronic gate, yeah, uh, and you present the Ghana card, yeah. when they swipe it or tap it, there is a passport, okay, in the on the chip, mm. okay, there's a machine readable zone mm -hmm. there at, in the strip that will show your biometrics and your everything mm -hmm. and your your alphanumeric data, date of yeah. birth and name, yeah. mm. so they can read it mm -hmm. and you are coming into your country yeah. and you do not need a visa to come to your country sure. yeah. so when you live in the uk or us or wherever mm -hmm. and you present the ghana card instead of your passport mm -hmm. or in lieu of your passport they mm -hmm. let you in okay. and um people and, and, and a, a grandson of mine just told me two weeks ago that when he got to Heathrow, he deliberately tested it mm -hmm. by presenting his Ghana card instead of his passport. Uh, passport and they let him in. And when you wow. get to Kutuka, there is no queue for the Ghana card. Now, I have holders. seen um, you know, testimonies like that on social media. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this, Prof. Have you had regrets? You, know, um, you mentioned that some people have turned this whole um, project, you know, something very positive, into political games, you know, some blaming you, those who thought they stood a better chance of winning certain um, um, contracts also thought that you have been a stumbling block. Ghanaians in general mm -hmm. who do not also want to be in queues have also raised a lot of concerns with frustrations, people um, yes. claiming we've not had our cards, we've been in queues for days, we are not getting all that. And now the many things that you need your Ghana card for, um, um, same registration, um, your bank transactions, mm -hmm. everything you need that. Yeah. 
Do you have regrets? Sometimes you feel tired. Do you feel like, I want to stop? Oh, no. Um, the hurricane of insults, um, the abuses. That's why I mentioned the National Reconciliation mm. Commission experience. Yeah. And I said it was a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. At the end of that exercise, Dr. Tony Adu, yeah, who was a strong NDC, I, yeah. I hope he still is, um, mm -hmm. remarked at a Good Evening Ghana show with... Um, my Paul? good friend and yeah, Paul and Haruna yeah. and uh, Gabi Otridaku and, 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 and Mr. Alaji, Ra Alaji Ramadan yeah. on the show that the National Reconciliation Commission had been a, a, a resounding success, that we it had was. done a good job. Yeah. That was in spite of all the suspicions mm. and the insults. Mm. Um, I am I'm focused on doing the right thing yeah. the best way possible. I don't do anything in a manner that could be done better. Mm. I do everything I do, I do it to the best of my abilities. Mm. So I am convinced that no other person could have done it better. Yeah. But if somebody else could have done it better, it just means that we will be a notch higher yeah. as a society. Mm. Yeah. What we've done at NIA, it far supersedes the understanding of those who were talking. Somebody was talking about doing this for $50 million, they have no clue mm -hmm. what mm. a national identification system is about. Yeah. They have a clue about how to issue a national ID number. Yeah. But ours, and that's just generated, developing an algorithm mm -hmm. to give numbers. We yeah. have done that. We can give n uh, unique ID numbers to 300 million Ghanaians up until 300 years from yeah. now or whatever. Mm -hmm. We've set up that scheme. The science is done. Mm -hmm. We've done the verification system. We protected the data. We've built the, the, the structures to secure your data, the bunkers to make sure that in the event of earthquake or disaster that the data is protected. We've done all that is mm. needful. We are at a new phase. Yeah. Those insulting me, um, the, first of all, I try not to listen to insults. Okay. They're too negative. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people tell me I'm too embarrassed to tell you what I heard somebody say yeah. about you. Anybody mm. insulting me has got no clue who I am. Yeah. Mm. Those who uh, have not gotten their cards, they fall into three categories. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. There are those whose data yeah. exists since President Kufo's time. Mm -hmm. Her name is Freema. Yeah. M A Simple. Yeah. Then in under President Kufo, mm -hmm. then under President Akufuado or Mahama, she goes and writes Freema with an H at okay. the end. It changes the name mm -hmm. com completely. Mm -hmm. So when you come and you administer your fingerprint, mm -hmm. yeah. the system arrests your application. Yeah. She was previously married, yeah. has moved on, and she is not going through the appropriate legal procedure to it change is, her name. Yeah. Somebody goes and takes a new date of birth. Mm -hmm. We have a PhD holder. Mm -hmm. who says he was born 1972. Yeah. He has a birth certificate to prove it. He says he was born in 1962. Mm -hmm. He has a birth certificate to prove it. He says he was born in 1968. And he has other documentation which, if you do the transposition, yeah. you realize that, yes, the guy was born in 1968. So which is which? Which is which. And he presented one of them for mm -hmm. his Ghana card. Mm -hmm. There are Ghanaians who lie. There are Ghanaians who have the nationalities of other countries that do not permit dual citizenship. Okay. And yet they come to Ghana, they are from Austria or Germany or the Netherlands, mm. and then mm. they come and get the Ghana card because yeah. they don't want to pay 120 US dollars for the foreigners. So, mm. yeah. so they get the Ghana card for free. And then when they get into trouble, they will say that NIA lied. I mean, sorry, NIA made a mistake yeah. and issued them with a Ghana card. Mm. So the main reason people are not getting their cards. Yeah. Number one is those who have provided contrary information. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be with an evil mind or a criminal intent, I mean a, a yeah. wrongful intent, yeah. but the point is that the information collides mm. with something else that is in the system. Yeah. And we have to correct it on a case by case basis. That's yeah. number one. Number mm -hmm. two, there are those people who at the time mm -hmm of their registration, mm -hmm. there was network challenge. Okay. We do our best to locate our registration centers. We survey every place the Electoral Commission used in the last election. That's mm. what the law requires us to do, okay. to use as our registration center. After using technology to determine where the network is strongest, mm. then we locate the registration center. center. But sometimes, 
in the course of the work, the network just disappears. Yeah. You call your own phone, it says yeah, you are switched yeah. off. Yeah. So <clears throat> some people don't get it instantly, but we introduce this instant issuance yeah. as a solution to the problem of old, mm. where only, as I said, 900,000 900, cards could yeah. be. Uh, issued. Yeah. So we developed a technology and by the way over 85 percent of the cards were issued instantly. Mm -hmm. Where that was not possible the cards were printed overnight. Okay. We call it deferred printing. Mm -hmm. So we may be in an auditorium of a church or a school classroom yeah. then we have a, a, a print farm. Mm -hmm. We print the cards our district officer will in charge will take them and distribute them at the registration centers so that they can be issued to people. Mm -hmm. Somebody may go two or three times mm -hmm. and for some reason their card has not been printed because mm -hmm. there was a long queue overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There was long failure, network problems. Yeah. So the person then gets frustrated mm -hmm. and then moves away. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were spending Christmas in the village when we were yeah. in Ashanti region and yeah. they registered yeah. and then Christmas is over, they are back in Accra, yeah. they are not going until another Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Then they will go to the police in Accra yeah. and report yeah. that their card is missing. Ah. Get a new, get an extract and go and get a card. Yeah. Create a, sh a shortage, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the original card is in the village. Yeah. They are not going to take it. Mm. Now, when we introduce a system of letting them, everyone apply their finger, mm -hmm. then you realize that the person has not even been issued with the card, and yet they are reporting that it's the card is lost. Yeah. lost. That this honesty is palpable. Yeah. And, and so that is one. Then the other con uh, factor is technical. Mm. There is just a small percentage of people for whom, for whatever reason, even though you captured their biometrics all right, mm -hmm. when it comes to printing, mm. there are no records. Mm. It may be less than one, one point, I mean something percent, yeah. okay, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. And we don't know until the person actually comes True. and then you try. Mm -hmm. There are people whose cards have been printed, but you cannot issue it to them because somehow between the time their fingerprints were captured and the time of attempted issuance, their fingerprints are faded. Okay. You know, there are people with fingers but without fingerprints. fingerprints so yeah. all of these are are mm. issues. Mm. Then there are also a few instances mm -hmm. where the hitch is simply because the um, during the mass registration yeah. we we went back and did something we call card issuance blitz just mm -hmm. to give cards to people because we knew that SIM card registration was going to begin. Yeah. Now during that process a lot of people handled cards, I mean, got their cards through the um, album system. Mm -hmm. Now, that system we introduced, yeah. some were not rigorous enough. And so some of the people had their cards, mm -hmm. but the biometrics had not been adequately mm -hmm. uh, captured. So the card is in the person's hand, but it is not functional yeah. until they get back to NIA and we, wow. we, we reissue. Wow. But this is a technical system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no perfect technical system. Mm -hmm. When Bill Gates launched it, when Obamacare, all of the Obamacare yeah. had a problem. We have over, as I said, 85% success rate yeah. with respect to instant issuance. Mm -hmm. All the cards that were in backlog, mm -hmm. that's the third reason. Yeah. The third reason is that we didn't have blank cards at a certain point okay. from July of last year roughly, mm. due to financial challenges. Now, when blank cards were made available in February after we went to Parliament, mm -hmm. we've been able to print all the cards that were in backlog, mm. 541,000 of them. Okay. We've sent them since March, yeah. early March, to the district and regional offices. Mm -hmm. We have opened 276 district offices. Mm. They are coterminous with our constituencies, mm. including yeah. Seoul. Mm. Okay. Mm. We have also opened 16 regional offices. Yeah. We did all of this the same day in November, on, a, on the 3rd of November, 2021. Wow. Unequal, unparalleled, mm. Mm. first of its kind in the history of this country. Right. We've done that. The offices are all functional. Okay. 
wherever you registered, mm -hmm. your card is there. Okay. If you go there, the card will be issued to you mm. today. Right. We've announced it, we've publicized this. Mm. Some have gone, others have not gone. Mm. MMDCs mm. and MPs mm. are helping, mm. mobilizing people to you mm. know, go and, and have the cards issued mm. to them. Right. But, now, now, Prof, so another thing that I want to find out from you, you know, this is a question uh, that... May, may I just add to your list? Please do. You, you, you <laughs> talked about there are 17 okay. mandatory users of the Ghana card. In other okay. words, there are 17 things mm. you cannot do in this country Without if you do not have the Ghana card. Yes. SIM card is one of them, uh -huh. yes. But passport and commercial yeah. banking, yeah. all now, the things Now, almost that... everything, you need your Ghana card. Almost mm. everything, you mm. know. Very soon, if you're going to buy watch it and you can't provide yeah. your Ghana card, <laughs> we, will <even> sell, <laughs> we will sell the food to you. But, you know, in all this, you've mentioned that um, being executive secretary to the um, uh, Reconciliation Commission, you know, was a dress rehearsal to you. You are the only one who went in there, you know, as executive secretary. So maybe you have a tougher skin to deal with some of these issues. But how does your family, your immediate family, handles all this, you know? And what kind of support system do they serve you? Well, I have a, a, a wife who, who is um, a lawyer, okay. um, a very calm, um, confident woman, mm -hmm. um, and wise. And from my reconciliation days. On um, the television? No, that's my ex-wife, actually. Okay. Um, I was previously married. Okay. Um, yes, I wanted my full truth to be, ah, to be known. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, but my wife's picture should be somewhere. Yeah, we'll in find there it. With, yes. We'll yes. find it. My wife is um, a very tall, um, strong looking woman. Why are you stressing when on you a very tall? Oh, because I'm very short. Okay, Prof <laughs> said a, it. Oh, I'm a very yeah. confident short man. Prof, you, I, you I, are. I, I, We've I, known I, you I from a far for a very long time. You know, there yeah. was this woman I worked with uh, at the Frederick Norman Foundation, tall mm -hmm. German woman. Yeah. And uh, she didn't know my wife, and we'd worked together for about two years. And one day, uh, Joyce came to pick me up from a workshop, <laughs> and she saw my wife. He said, I introduced her. <laughs> He said, Kenny, is that your wife? That's okay, so do we have the correct photo now? Yes, that's right. Super. Over there on the right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's um, uh, the vice president standing behind me there. Oh, that yeah. That was my best yeah. man. And um, um, yeah. Beautiful. And then that's Delakini, yeah. um, uh, my wife's uh, maid of honor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that was December 31st okay. of 1999. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. Um, so when the gentleman, uh, the lady saw my wife, he said, Wow, you must be a very brave man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? you know? So, the, so the vice president was your best man. Yes. Okay. How yes. close are you? Oh, very close. We are friends from um, Canada. We okay. Were, we were in the same Simon Fraser University. Mm. We did our PhD uh, together, and we became very good friends. Um, on my 60th birthday, um, he he paid tribute to okay. to me, oh, and wow. some of the things he said our wives are close mm -hmm. and we are also very very close we family yeah. um, and it's got nothing to do with politics mm. we, we were determined mm -hmm. over there in 1992 and all of that yeah. to come to Ghana and um, um, go into our various sectors okay. and, 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 and try to reshape rebuild mm. Uh, mm. our country wow. and that's what we've, we've tried mm. to do I have um, one last question just yes, to wrap please. things up at the end of the day, when you're done with NIA and you're done with public service and everything else, what is the one thing that you say to yourself, I'm really happy about this, that I'm most able to get this thing done? Oh, I think it is just this. I want to be able to complete this to the point where the person taking over from me come this November um, would would succeed. Mm -hmm. My successor must succeed. Um, I must leave a legacy of integrity, a legacy of competence and accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I am focused, I'm determined, and I'm coherent, and I want to be sure that I am able to provide a Chijinapa for the next person, okay. solid support <laughs> so that they would succeed. Yeah. And I would like to be remembered for that. Mm -hmm. I would like to be remembered for integrity and competence. And I think those are the two key things that is that, that are in short supply mm. in public service. Yeah. I think um, it, 
of course, part of the problem is also the, the tendency for a lot of people, particularly in the private sector, to assume that public sector workers are all corrupt and lazy and incompetent. Mm. It's, it's painful yeah. and, and it, it, it dissuades a lot of good people from mm -hmm. wanting to enter public uh, a public service. Mm. But I think that we, we, we ought to energize and quicken the pace of development and patriotism in our country. And Thank you are doing you. just that. You're you. such an inspiration. Thank you. Beautiful. All Thank right. you very much. All right, so we've been uh, speaking with uh, Prof. Um, Prof. Kenneth Ajiman Atifa, and uh, he's just, ah, this was a great conversation. I really enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, David. Thank you, thank you.